continuing my rebuild of the game Caverns, never released on the ZX81. It's that time of year when my thoughts turn to Z80 coding. The dreary winter's days in the UK are a perfect time for struggling with some machine code. When you get something working, the high makes up for the drizzle outside. So in this video I'm going to look at the part of the code I'm currently working on. At the end I'll look at some debugging tips for when working in C-Spec I hadn't seen before. I got the dwarves working in a basic way last year. They travelled down the corridors of the cabins and would randomly choose a new direction when they reached the split in the passageways. They would also ride the lifts, which is a fun piece of code to ride. But to get them working the same as in the TypeScript version of the game, there was a bit to do. First, the dwarves had to have a limited lifespan. This is so if they get stuck in a part of the cavern, after a random time they would regenerate back at the dwarf start position. I added some code to do this, with a few false starts, like when the dwarves weren't being cleared when they moved. Then another bug where they would vanish immediately when restarted. The next thing to do is to make the dwarf algorithm smarter to match the TypeScript version. In TypeScript, if there is only one direction available, they move that way. If there are two directions available, they continue going in the way they were going previously. If there are more than two directions available, there are different strategies selected at random. One is to continue in the same direction, another is to take a random direction from those available, and a third, if no strategy has been selected, to go in a direction in the set sequence. This set of strategies keep the dwarves moving in interesting work, exploring the different regions of the cavern. So working on these algorithms in Z80 is my task for the next few weeks. And once I'm happy I've got the dwarves moving in these patterns, a big chunk of the game is done. Then on to the next area. I've no target date for completing the game, just so long as it gets finished one day, before I lose the ability to write machine code. This is a project with a very long time span, and something I keep coming back to when in the mood to struggle with some tricky coding. And if I do get it finished, maybe that will be the time to buy an actual ZX81 to see it running on there. Running it on the next is cool, but I'd really like to see it running on the original hardware at least once. Okay, so I'll now just show a couple of tips on the C-Spec debugger um, that came from the Spectrum Next Annual. Um, so going into the debugger, the first one is to move the code to a, a specific memory location. So supposing I want to move to location 16. So that takes me to 0010, which is the hex for 16 on the, on the main window. You can also move the memory window. So if I wanted to move that to um, the same location, that is M and then the location, again decimal, which takes you in the memory window to uh, 0010, the hex for that. So these will come in handy for sure. I'm, I might have missed them before looking at the C-Spec documentation. And then the cursor keys move you up and down. And if you do a shift cursor key, that moves the memory window up and down. Another thing I didn't know about. Then another tip, um, what I've been doing to um, force a break into the um, debugger was use um, the codes DB221 and DB1, um, which would force the break when, uh, when the code got to that point. But another way to do this is to use a B, a B break instruction, um, which does the same thing. I'm not sure I tried this yet, but um, but this should be easier to remember. Um, so yeah, so these tips were in the uh, Spectrum Next Annual. Um, thanks to Emug for providing these. So that's it for this video, and thanks for watching.